So this recent Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin interview revealed something that's actually extremely frightening. Putin has openly targeted Canada next, specifically Justin Trudeau, but as collateral, all of Canada, because he's said that he's on a goal to denazify the world. Denazification is a real thing that he has used that's translated to the exact same thing from his foreign language to English. And why is Canada a target? Because we literally celebrated a Nazi being in parliament with a standing ovation. It's not a small thing. It's not like a little oopsie. And our prime minister has taken zero accountability. We're going to go over some of the footage. We're going to look at exactly what Putin said and exactly how Justin Trudeau handled the situation. And then I'll leave, leave it up to you to make a decision on whether or not Vladimir Putin will target Canada next. Because it's a known fact that Canada has welcomed Nazis since World War II. We've Welcomed them safely, and now, for crying out loud, we have awarded them. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Buckle up, this is going to be kind of a scary one. I'm not saying you're going to see Russians paratrooping down, going, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. I don't know how it's going to, what form it's going to it's going to look like when Russia uh, inevitably t makes a move to denazify Canada, because that's his mission. That's Putin's mission. Now, all of Russia is like, yeah, get rid of the Nazis. They're bad. The world is like, yeah, Nazis are bad, except the ones that we applaud and the liberals somehow seem to be on board with that so buckle up smash the like button subscribe if you haven't yet already and i want to mention that there is a 20 percent off sticker deal for a whole pack of stickers link down in the description or the pinned comment below you've got claus schwab like the one on my microphone penetrating justin trudeau freeland on a broom trudeau on a milk carton i did not see that coming if you want that sticker might as well get the whole sticker pack and speech you hate does not equal hate speech like i said link down in the description 20 percent off uh, or the pinned comment below. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at this article from 2022. <clears throat> Ukraine's Nazi problem is real, even if Putin's denazification claim isn't. Guys, this is a very powerful individual, okay? He has access to nuclear technology, nuclear weapons, one of the biggest armies in the world. It's a huge, huge deal that he's on a path to denazify the world. He's starting with Ukraine. Next is probably not Poland. Next is probably Canada, since we freaking glorified a Nazi on the global stage. One of the many uh, distortions manufactured by Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin to justify Russia's assault on Ukraine, perhaps the most bizarre in his claim, uh, that the action was taken to denazify the country and its leadership. In making his case for entering his neighbor's territory with armored tanks and fighter jets, Putin has stated that the move was undertaken to protect people who have been subjected to bullying and genocide. Uh, and that Russia will strive to demilitarize, strive demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine, but also the world. In this article, they're just focusing on Ukraine. Now, let's take a look at the article here, or sorry, the video here. Um, I did play it in yesterday's video, but I just want to go over exactly what he said. So we're going to watch it again. It's a great interview, um, just a clip here, and then we're going to get into how Trudeau has handled it because the way that Justin Trudeau handled it, he never actually denounced the fact that a Nazi came into parliament and that he brought a Nazi in and applauded him. He said, oh, you know, that wasn't good. He never said, we denounce Nazis. We don't stand with Nazis. Canada does not harbor or protect Nazis. And we want no affiliation with Nazis. That's a huge red flag that Justin Trudeau did not say that. And it's reflected not just in Canada, not just with other members of parliament, not just as Canadian citizens, but the rest of the world. More specifically, this badass mother effer who's on a mission to get rid of all the Nazis in the world. And we're like, yeah, we got some here in Canada. We're not sorry. We're not sorry for having them here. That's freaking scary, guys. Really scary. I say that Ukrainians are part of the one Russian people. They say, no, we are a separate people. Okay, fine. If they consider themselves a separate people, they have the right to do so. But not on the basis of Nazism, the Nazi ideology. Would you be satisfied with the territory that you have now? I will finish answering the question. You just asked the question about neo-Nazism and denazification. Here we go. Look. 
The president of Ukraine visited Canada. This story is well known, but being silenced in the Western countries. The Canadian parliament introduced a man who, as the speaker of the parliament said, fought against the Russians during the World War II. Well, who fought against the Russians during the World War II? Hitler and his accomplices. It turned out that this man served in the SS troops. He personally killed Russians, Poles and Jews. The SS troops consisted of Ukrainian nationalists who did this dirty work. The president of Ukraine stood up with the entire parliament of Canada and applauded this man. How can this be imagined? The president of Ukraine himself, by the way, is a Jew by nationality. Really, my question is, what do you do about it? I mean, Hitler's been dead for 80 years. Nazi Germany no longer exists. And so, true. And so, I think what you're saying is you want to extinguish or at least control Ukrainian nationalism. But how? How do you do that? Послушайте меня. Ваш вопрос очень тонкий. Listen to me. Your question is very subtle, and I can tell you what I think. Do not take offense. Of course. This question appears to be subtle. It is quite pesky. You say Hitler has been dead for so many years, 80 years, but his example lives on. People who exterminated Jews, Russians and Poles are alive. And the president, the current president of today's Ukraine, applauds him in the Canadian parliament, gives a standing ovation. Can we say that we have completely uprooted this ideology if what we see is happening today? That is what denazification is in our understanding. We have to get rid of those people who maintain this concept and support this practice and try to preserve it. That is what denazification is. That is what we mean. Right. My so that's what's extremely scary, folks. Nazi Germany, yeah, eradicated right, 80 years ago, whatever the hell he said. Yeah, but we just had a Nazi in parliament. And we're going to take a look at the insane amount of headlines that were around the world over this. Dipping Canadian Parliament applauds Nazi. You have Al Jazeera, Bloomberg, every media outlet around the world has covered this. Putin even calls the Nazi invite disgusting. But Russia is so bad. Russia is bad. Everything Russia does is bad. That Nazis are somehow now good it doesn't make any sense putin is on a mission to denazify the entire world get rid of it we should all be on board with that why are we not all on board with that why is justin trudeau not taking actual accountability for this mistake let's take a look at this half-ass apology that happened uh, because of inviting a nazi we have here in the chamber today ukrainian canadians ukrainian canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. His name is Yaroslav Hunka. And uh, I was going to say he's in the gallery, but I think you beat me to that. Obviously, it's extremely upsetting that this happened. Uh, the speaker, speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologized. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and, by extension, to all Canadians. Uh, I think particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country who are uh, celebrating young or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Uh, I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine, uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. That's just the most pathetic way to handle that situation. Look, if I were to ever somehow be 
caught, right, in a situation that is significantly less worse than this. Like, I'm hanging out with, like, a criminal, and I didn't know he was a criminal, right? Oh, my God, Mr. Sunshine Baby just went to the bar and had a beer with, like, some really bad person, right? Oh, he's exposed. I would then say... I'm sorry, I had no idea who this person really was. I didn't know about this past, and I denounce all of those bad behaviors. I do not condone that, nor do I think that th their values align with my values, and I'm sorry for anyone I've offended. That was a mistake. It'll never happen again. I do not condone those behaviors. That's just like a bad person. We're talking about freaking Nazi, man, a freaking Nazi. And this isn't just like a schoolyard scrubble. This isn't like a, he invited somebody, like a, a speaker to the, to, to his school or college university by mistake. This is in parliament, like the tippity top of Canada. Like it's it, like the thing, like the, the biggest thing in Canada, right? On the biggest stage in Canada. And it's just, it's so ridiculous that the way he approaches it is, oh, it's Russian disinformation and misinformation. He's like, he's a Muppet, right? Like Klaus Schwab or some, some dumbass has his hand so far up Trudeau's ass and is just talking like he's a Muppet. That's not how you handle this type of event. And that's why the world is outraged. And that's why Canada is potentially going to be a target for Putin. Putin has Trudeau in his crosshairs. You freaking invited a Nazi into parliament. I don't like Nazis. Nobody likes Nazis. We're going to get rid of them. How many more Nazis do you have in Canada? That's extremely scary, folks. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty big reality check. But anyways, I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Uh, are you worried? Are you not worried? Please let me know. Are you on board with what Putin says? Or do you think, nah, that's okay. We should just celebrate Nazis as if it's no big deal. Looking forward to reading the comments down below. Next up, we have Trudeau says the loss of government approved journalism in Canada is a threat to democracy as it impedes his ability to spread misinformation. The Bell Canada layoffs of 4,800 people across the country. What a nut job. Your heritage minister accused Bell Canada of breaking its promise to invest in local news after receiving $40 million in regulatory funding. What is your view of these layoffs and what is your commitment to future government support with that company? I'm furious. This is a garbage decision by a corporation that should know better. We've seen over the past years, journalistic outlets, radio stations, small community newspapers, bought up by corporate entities who then lay off journalists, you know, change the offering, the quality of offering to people. And then when people don't watch as much or engage as much, the corporate entity says, oh, see, they're not profitable anymore. We're going to sell them off. This is the erosion, not just of journalism, of quality local journalism at a time where people need it more than ever, given misinformation and disinformation. Oh, my God. But it's eroding our very democracy. And over the past years, corporate Canada, and there are many culprits on this, have abdicated their responsibility towards the communities that they have always made very good profits off of in various ways. And they need, like, as a government, we have been stepping up over the past years, fighting for local journalism, fighting for investments that we can have, while all the while fending off attacks from conservatives and others who say, no, 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 you're trying to buy off journalists. We're trying to support journalism in this country and across this country. But no government can do it alone. Canadians need to demand better, as we will be demanding better, from corporate leaders, like in this case, Bell, that are eroding Canadians' ability to know each other, to trust each other, and to trust in the country and the future we are building together. So yeah, I'm pretty pissed off about what's just happened. You know what Canadians are pissed off about? The fact that Trudeau is still prime minister. It doesn't make any sense. He's got less than 1% of votership. He will not get elected. His name will forever be dragged through the mud, as it very well should. And he's put Canadians at risk. He's put our economy at risk. He's almost imploded our economy here in Canada. He's smeared our reputation around the world. Canada is a laughingstock. It used to be America, and to any Americans watching, I'm sorry, but we all 
all know America has always been kind of the laughing stock. In the West, it's like, yeah, America's super powerful. But you go to anywhere else in the world, and America's like, yeah, America's kind of a joke, and it's funny, and ha ha ha, we laugh at how your whole, you know, your whole system works. But now that's Canada. We've had Nazis. We have a prime minister whose plane breaks down. India hates him. Russia hates him. Everybody in the in the world hates Justin Trudeau, including but not limited to the Canadians that live in this country. It's absolutely embarrassing. Putin offers path to peace after talking with Tucker Carlson saying the war will be over in weeks if the U.S. stops giving Ukraine weapons of war. That is literally all it took. It's absolutely insane. He wants to denazify the world. He has a, now there's a tangible way for the war to stop but it's not going to stop because the west is going to keep feeding this this machine they're going to keep and they're going to we're we're being exposed to propaganda here by our mainstream media it just doesn't end it's absolutely embarrassing and it's uh it's very frightening and what's even well it's hilarious about this whole thing is that fox news viewership is tanking cnn viewership is tanking msnbc viewership is tanking and meanwhile tucker carlson's interview with putin almost got a billion views in just one day that is absolutely insane um, next up, we have Trudeau was asked if he would have introduced the carbon tax differently, given the unpopularity of the policy. Look at his face. I can't stand his freaking face, man. God, I hate this guy. You know, you mentioned Pierre Polyev and, and the conservatives. Uh, they have been running on a campaign about ax the tax, mm-hmm. talking about the carbon tax as well. So carbon pricing, something that the entire country has been watching. And it seems as if there's a little bit of a disconnect in terms of what it is and what Canadians are getting out of it. Do you think you would have done something differently uh, in terms of introducing this carbon tax in order to educate? Look Canadians at the way he sits. He sits like a woman. And how they benefit or how much more they pay out of it when it was established. Well, let me let me take the opportunity right now. Yeah. We brought it in as a way to both fight climate change by putting a price on pollution so people would make businesses, would make investments, that would upgrade their machinery and, and do things better, more productively and cleaner. Mm-hmm. And return more money uh, to middle class families so they're not carrying the burden. So every three months here in Ontario, uh, Ontarian families get uh, a Canada Carbon uh, uh, rebate, uh, basically uh, a check uh, for the price on pollution that on average puts more money back in their pockets. So when uh, Mr. Polyev talks about uh, killing the, car- the price on pollution, axing the tax. He's not only talking about doing less to fight climate change and prepare for the economy of the future. He's also talking about taking away those checks for hundreds of dollars that families get four times a year uh, here in Ontario and in other jurisdictions that means they're actually better off while we fight climate change in a way that is bending our emissions down faster than any other G7 country. The fight against climate change matters. We only have to look at the wild. Yeah, I don't know. But building a strong economy for the future matters as well. And that's where companies like Stellantis, uh, Volkswagen, uh, companies across the country are looking to invest because we're leading in a clean electricity grid, but we're also creating jobs and careers uh, for the long term in a cleaner economy. Are you hoping to rebrand that to help? Uh, we're understand? just going to continue to talk about it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there. Uh, mm-hmm. Mr. hasn't talked once about the fact that he's going to be cutting those checks to Canadians as he cuts uh, the check <coughs> the tax. Uh, he- I will gladly sacrifice my carbon tax check if it means that the carbon tax is removed from all the things that I'm purchasing. I don't know about you, but let me know down in the comments if the cost of living would be cheaper and then as, as a byproduct, you force fit your carbon check which is significantly less than what you would be paying in in taxes he's talking about cuts to what we need to do to build a stronger future we're going to keep doing the hard work of building that stronger future yeah that guy is absolutely de- delusional there is there's not going to be a stronger future unless justin trudeau gets the hell out of office in fact the longer he stays in the more at risk we are of being nuked by russia and every other country in the damn world but i'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments about any of the topics that i covered i look forward to i look forward to reading the comments once the video is posted and as well as before i sign off i want to encourage everyone to smash the like button subscribe if you haven't yet please consider turning post notifications on so you can actually be notified of upcoming videos it adds a 
layer of insurance. And if you want a matching sticker or one of the I did not see that coming stickers, the link for that is down in the description or the pinned comment below for 20% off of a sticker bundle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.